Students often ask me what they should learn next um, after we get done with a course. And uh, my answer is very similar um, to what I give other classes that I teach because some of the things that I'm going to chat about here in this video uh, apply to anybody anywhere in their career. Um, but normally when you take this take a course with me, if it's like a course like 2000, 2120, 2150, or something like that, I would suggest other courses in the certificate uh, to take. But you guys, I'm assuming, there's a very good chance that you're at the end of your certificate, so you're probably not interested in taking other classes. You're ready to get out and get going. So in some ways, I think this video is very important for, 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 for many of you guys. So let's just think uh, about a few things. Um, again, I'm not an academic advisor. Uh, I'm just going to be talking to you based on my own personal opinion and my background experience. So let's go ahead and get started. So to answer that question, <laughs> it's really up to you to answer that question. How about that? Uh, um, are you going, but then I would suggest saying at the very beginning of this, you know, are you planning on being more of a hobbyist or a professional? I would suggest, or I would assume, that if you have come this way, if you've come this far in the program, I'm guessing that you are probably planning on being um, somewhat of a professional. But I do, I mean, think of this. I mean, I have many students that just take, you know, 2000 and 2120 as an elective. You know, they have no plans on being a professional. And I've even some, seen some students that go through and get the whole certificate, and they're still not planning on being a professional. Um, being a professional, you don't necessarily have to be the the, the sole web designer uh, in a firm. Um, often maybe you could just be someone who sits on a, a panel of people that help make decisions for the website. And people from the certificate have left to go do things like that uh, with local St. Louis companies and, and, and beyond, of course. I mean, with this, this certificate, you now have a background of things like usability and, uh, you know, some best principles of graphics and stuff. Like that's what this the, some of the goal of this course is. And so imagine just sitting on a panel and just chatting about, you know, hey, let's make sure we make this easy for the user, or let's uh, let's think about a better way to use this graphic, or a better placement of this graphic, or have we considered doing this with the layout of the site? That doesn't mean that you're necessarily the, the main web designer doing the coding. Um, think of you in that sense as more of a consulting type role uh, to your firm that you're currently working in. But then again, we do have many students that go on to be uh, within uh, an actual uh, corporation as someone who is doing the coding. So like the corporation is out uh, gaining clients and then so uh, a student might be on a small team of just two or three working to make some websites for these clients or maybe they're the, the main person within the firm making the specific website for that client. You're, you're receiving uh, information from a salesman who's also getting the content and that's given to you and then you code their site based on what they've paid for. We do have lots of students that uh, do freelance so they then create themselves as a web designer here um, with the skills that they've learned and they're able to now make you know simple uh, smaller sites they can they can actually go through the whole web, web development lifecycle with a client that they take on to just do you know simple sites. These are not students that are going to be making sites like Amazon, but perhaps for uh, a local mom and pop store or, or or something like that, you know, or an independent contractor or someone who needs a website. With the skills that you've learned in this certificate, you can make a pretty simple site all by yourself for uh, clients like that. But many of our students do go on uh, to work within a larger company, and they are perhaps one piece of a puzzle of uh, of making uh, a website for a client. Um, so when you think about that, think about, you know, perhaps if you're going the professional route, um, do you want to be more of a web designer or do you want to be more of a web developer? You've heard me say things like web designer focuses more on the front end of the site. That's what slaps the user in the face when they get there. And then you have the, the, the often overlooked web developer. That's someone who does the back end development. They don't have a lot of relationship with the user, but the, a lot of the things that the user do, does in terms of functioning with the site, the web developer has to create uh, databases and, and things like that on the back end to catalog and organize that information. Um, don't feel, this is my opinion, again, this is my opinion, don't feel like you're finishing up the design certificate and then you have to jump into the developer certificate before you can get a job in this industry. That's absolutely not true. I would suggest as soon as you feel like you have a firm handle on 
perhaps something just as simple as HTML and CSS. As soon as you feel like you have a really good, strong, solid handle on HTML and CSS, and you've had the courses in this in this certificate that basically give you a knowledge of it, other than just a tool that you actually know well placement, you know best practices, you know um, uh, principles that you can then apply to the future working with other clients. Once you have kind of a firm understanding of that, I would say that you're somewhat ready. But you also need to have um, a, a pieces in your portfolio to be able to show a future employer what you know how to do. That's very important because they're probably not going to hire you um, with, with just, hey, I can do HTML and CSS. You have to be able to show them what you can do. And that's that's very, very important. That's really what's going to help get you the job. Just having a certificate listed on your resume is not necessarily going to get you the job. It might get you in for an interview, um, but it's not necessarily going to get you the job. Or even if you have a certificate and they hire you, and then they feel, then the first week of work they realize you can't code what they thought you could code, then unfortunately you would lose your job. So I would suggest, you know, waiting till you fully have a strong background in HTML, CSS for, for a basic web designer position. Um, if you're going to go out and, and work within a firm. Um, but anyways, let's continue on the conversation of the differences between the web designer and the web developer. A resource that I often share in some of my courses is an infographic by Six Revisions, which is also a great website, which you can find listed on our external resources page. But this website, if you go to it, I have the, if you could just go to Google and type in web designers versus web developers info, infographic, within the first five search results you're going to find this. Um, but anyways, this is going to give you kind of a, just a little bit of understanding of some differences in terms of pay, uh, roles, um, what type of coffee they prefer, <laughs> funny things like that. But um, I would suggest giving that, giving, checking that out, and, and, see, and seeing what you seeing what you think, and really trying to help figure out um, what you actually want to what you actually want to do um, in, in that situation. Are you wanting to be more of a web designer or a or web developer? It's a very important question to ask, especially early on in your career. So. And now I would suggest, after we get through thinking about that, is you should stop and try to gather your resources. And if I could borrow from one of my favorite companies, North Face, you know, never stop exploring, let's say never stop learning. So let's first gather our resources. What resources am I talking about? Well, as a student of Webster, you have access to lynda.com, and I'm hoping that you guys utilize lynda.com this term for continuing your knowledge of HTML and CSS but also many of you used it to jump into some things in the Adobe suite, which is great. Um, often, you know, we have new versions, often, um, when I say new versions, we have new versions of the programs that are discussed in lynda.com by uh, experts in their field, but also uh, the videos are regularly updated. Um, so I would suggest even after you leave Webster to perhaps consider purchasing access to a yearly subscription to lynda.com as a way to uh, gain your resources and, and knowledge. So like for example, let's say you, you work within a firm and your company jumps from Photoshop 6 to Photoshop 7. I mean you can go into lynda.com and they will have a quick little two hour video that discusses the differences between between 6 and 7 and I think about you being now a person within the company that truly uh, knows exactly why we did this upgrade and then you can be the liaison and now the expert in your firm they could talk to other students in the class about what's changed. I mean, other, not other students in the class, other people in your firm about what's changed. Um, I think that would be a very uh, wise thing to do. Um, anyways, but then also as you continue your learning, right now you probably feel like, you know, I have a firm handle on HTML and CSS, but I don't have a firm handle on JavaScript. And again, right now for the purposes of this course, maybe you didn't get into that, but but I would suggest, you know, as you leave, as you leave Webster, you know, don't stop your learning. You know, maybe use it as an opportunity to, yes, take on some clients or yes, focus more on the career that you're already in and take a break from school. But I would suggest continuing to learn and maybe just jumping into some Linda resources about JavaScript would be a great thing for you to learn. Um, other things to consider learning in terms of content management system, that's what the CMS stands for, is because content management systems are very important. Currently, we don't have a content management course uh, within the design certificate or within within uh, math and computer science but eventually hopefully we will but a content management system that would be something like WordPress or Drupal or Joomla and you're thinking well, why would I want to learn about WordPress that's about blogging well no a content management system is basically this website package 
that you can that are free to download. Well, often they're free to download. At least these here listed are free to download. You take this content package and you install it on the server, and then you basically it's like in, it's like buying a pre-manufactured house. You then install that pre-manufactured house uh, somewhere on a server, then you're able to log into it. You're able to give different users access to it. But then you go into your pre-manufactured home and you determine, you know, let's put some drapes on these windows. Let's uh, let's paint these walls. Let's change the carpet. Let's put some content in these rooms. You know, um, put some stuff in here. Uh, so that's what basically a content management system is in a nutshell. And it's important, I think, for because the direction of web design in some ways, uh, web designers are often asked and asked to work with these content management systems. For example, the the learning management system that you guys are in right now. Uh, as a web designer, I had to learn that, and I had to learn how to take what I knew with HTML and CSS and interface that with the learning management system. So, um, and learning about these content management systems can be done in Lynda. They don't just have these free ones, but they also have other paid ones, paid for, because some content management systems do cost as well. And of course, the Adobe Suite. Um, and then let's chat about the Adobe Suite. I mean, in this course, you definitely have uh, a background of doing a little bit, I would I would think, with the free tools of GIMP and Inkscape, but perhaps you want to learn more about Photoshop or Illustrator. And again, here I suggest, as we saw earlier in the course, some things that you can definitely use these tools for. Um, as a web designer, and you're going to go out and be a freelancer, and you could only have, let's say you only had, you know, 200 bucks to buy one of these programs, I would suggest buying Fireworks, like you've heard me talk about before, because unfortunately there isn't a free version. But Fireworks, you kind of give you the best of both worlds in terms of Bitmap and Vector. And again, in terms of resources, Linda can help you learn about how to use all of these tools so that you can continue to broaden your skill set. That's very, very, very important for uh, you to consider, you know, like I said, never stop learning. Um, because, you know, the web is constantly changing. Um, since I started designing pages, you know, 10 years ago, the web is it looks very, very different. I mean, go to websites like the Wayback Machine, uh, that's that's powered by Archive.com, and then go take your favorite website, maybe something like site like Webster University or Amazon, and turn the turn the website back and take a look at the site, you know, five years ago. The site looks completely different. Back then, we didn't have the the ways to design things that we do now. I mean, so the web is constantly changing in terms of what. Uh, the users want in terms of interface, in terms of how it looks. So it's very important for us to always be continuing our learning so that we can stay up with with, with those types of trends. And then outside of web design, using lynda.com is also a great place for you to learn some other business skills. Uh, they have video series that I think I showed you guys this earlier on the course, but there's video series there in terms of how to ace your interview and building a resume and things like that. So that you probably wouldn't think to use lynda.com for, but I'm telling you, I personally have watched many of these videos and they're very powerful and they really will give you some good information to help you uh, with your future career in terms of searching for a job like the job search strategies video some things that you probably didn't think of so I would go to the subjects business skills area and definitely check out some of these resources and then don't forget your external resources because there should be a way for you to continue your learning you know with resources that perhaps come to your inbox or come into some sort of Google Reader that you have set up because this is another way to kind of stay on top of how the web is changing. Uh, and the external resources page that I have within the course, there I have some very popular web design and development blogs, blogs or creativity blogs, or even some sites for that, that talk about learning of HTML and CSS and things like that. These are very important resources that are constantly changing, constantly putting up new posts, new ways of thinking about things in our field. And it would be great for you to kind of figure out how to stay on top of them and continue your learning with them. Do you have to subscribe to, I don't know, maybe let's say I had 50 of them on that page. Do you have to subscribe to all 50? Well, if you're really going to review all 50 of them, then I think it would be useful to subscribe to them all. Um, but I would say if you could choose maybe one or two, at bare minimum, choose one or two. Have those come into your inbox uh, with a subscription to them or into some sort of Google Reader and truly try to look at them maybe at least once a week just to see what some of the things that they're talking about. And that would be a way to continue your learning. So um, please, please, please check out those external resources. I, I'm hoping that you've at least checked out them some over the per term of this course. Um, but check them out. Figure out which ones you feel like you really like for your needs. Save them into some sort of Google Reader or get like an email subscription to them. And, and, and keep up with them in, in terms of, of the things that they're, that they're talking about each week. And then 
Here is my next solution, would be to experiment and find solutions to problems. Uh, so as what should I do next? Experiment and find solutions to problems. You've heard, you've seen the be an observant web user at the end of each of our weeks. Well, I would suggest you know continuing to be that observant web user. Go out and you're seeing, you know, some things and you're wondering well, how did they do that? You know, as I've told you before, try to figure out how they did it. You know, or maybe you you see, wow, I wish they would have done this, this, or this. You know, and then try to find a solution to their problem. Maybe you're contacting a site like Amazon and say, hey, I see this problem on your site. Let me fix it. Probably not going to be the case, but anyways, you you're going out and you're seeing problems. You know, maybe the problem is you're you're realizing that uh, an independent contractor that's about to do work on your house doesn't have a website. Well, let's find a solution to their problem with the things that you've learned in our program. I think you might know what that solution could be. Um, but even within the, fr the the companies that you guys are already working with, because I know that many of you are professionals already, you know, find solutions, perhaps web design solutions to the problems that they already have. Either solutions to make uh, make it easier for your, their users of their website or make their website more effective and efficient for different devices. You know, all the things that we've been chatting about in this course, I'm hoping that you would have solutions to some of, you know, their problems. And of course, as I end every week, you know, let the class or I know if you, you have any questions. I'm hoping that some of the things that we've chatted about here in just these last, you know, 15 minutes or so can kind of give you an idea of what to do next because you're probably I'm guessing at a crossroads you know you're about to finish your certificate and you're kind of wondering well what do I do do I take the development certificate um, that's really up to you and your needs like I said earlier um, but you know talk to talk with that about the class you know um, and then finally I would like to suggest hey let's keep in contact with me um, I have relationships with different web design firms within the St. Louis area and um, I can also you know make suggestions of what of of job search strategies and stuff too. Uh, some of the tools that I regularly use are things sites like Indeed or uh, uh, social networking like LinkedIn. And I would suggest you know staying c in contact with me. If if I haven't actually already tried to be connected with you on LinkedIn, um, try to look me up or maybe set up a LinkedIn account um, and get connected with me. A lot of students come to me asking questions about personal branding and developing a portfolio to share with clients. You know. Um, I would definitely be be interested in talking with you about that or even uh, go, taking a look at your portfolio maybe a year from now and giving you some suggestions on how to continue to develop in your portfolio. But also consider using me as a reference. Um, I've enjoyed working with all of you in, over the course of this course and I hope that to, to stay connected with you into the future. And then maybe you're going to be working in a web design firm in the future. I build a relationship with you but then I realize you post some sort of job at uh, uh, that's available at your firm and I would be able to share that with some future students two or three years from now and then I can connect those students with you. Uh, I've had that happen as well. Um, anyways, uh, I've enjoyed teaching all of you in this course. I'm hoping that you guys um, had a lot of fun uh, with this uh, simulation that I put you guys through and I'm hoping that you thought about some of your designs creatively and I'm hoping, like I said, I hope you have a professional piece for your portfolio with the site that you created for this course. Um, and again, uh, farewell if this is the end of your certificate. Uh, if you ever happen to be in the St. Louis area, um, look, me, look me up on the, on the nightly class schedule and stop by and say hi. And say, hey Dave, you know, remember me from a year or two ago? I took your uh, Web Design Principles 2 online and I'd just like to touch base with you face to face. I had many students to just drop in like that and, and I welcome that every time. Um, anyways, uh, have a good rest of your week as you're finishing things up, and I will definitely see you in the course, if not in the future. Talk to you later.